Dear everyone, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you are, wherever you are, to all of you, and I greet you also with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I wish you having a blessed and fruitful and good time uh, with your friends, with your colleagues, with your family, with everybody. Uh, this is my third episode, part three in the Fadfada series, Problem Facing Charitable Work. And uh, today also I will thank the same group which have helped me uh, since we started three weeks ago. Ali Shawa, who is on the media. Uh, can you change the slide, Ali? And this group of people, Dr. Muhammad Bashir, Lutfi Sayyid, Ahmed al Heat, Hala Fuad, Ahmed al Sheikh, and Mustafa Muad. Uh, they are from UK, Egypt, Sudan, Turkey, Syria, and they are volunteers and also expertise in this field of charitable activities. So I'm thanking them every time because I should recognize them whenever I present one of these episodes. Uh, this is our third episode of Fatfada. We will be challenged, we'll be discussing challenges facing our work again on two levels. Personal level, when actually behavior of individuals, such as chairman, board members, or executive members of the organizations, or on the organization level, which come back to Al Waqf, which is the endowment scheme and the administration cost coming back again to the same problem which we discuss every time. Uh, I have got five questions raised by my group. The first one, which is the bad institutional memories created by, and by us, by somebody like myself as an employee or as a chairman of the organization, or as a board member and been seen by one of the donors or one of the volunteers. And such a problem will be staying in the uh, an institutional memory of the donor of the individuals. This one of the problem. The second part of the first question is, some donors love, love very much to contact the poor people directly, particularly women, uh, I mean, widows and orphans. So these questions of these two problems, bad behavior of individuals like myself, which have a bad, which give very bad impression to a donor like you, or the second one, the insistence of the donor or some donors to communicate directly with the children or orphans or the women who are widows. This is the first point. The first problem is uh, might seldomly happen because we are such individual working in this sector are not angels, to be very honest, are not saints, we are not uh, prophets or messengers. Sometimes do mistakes, okay? And it has a right, and the donor has every right to be upset with me or with you if I do something wrong or if I behave badly in front of the donor. How to deal with this problem? My advice to any donor or any individual who sees somebody like me doing something and yani behaving badly is to follow the five steps which I'm going to mention. Number one, please, 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 for God's sake, don't start by going to the media or to the social media first. Just number one. It's the easiest, but it's number one. Number two, contact the responsible people inside the organization. Contact the board, or contact the chairman, or contact the uh, uh, chief executives. Okay? And ask them, send them to complain. Number three is request a, a one to a face to face meeting with them. Yeah, but first of all, please don't publicize. Number two, write an official complaint and request a meeting. Number three, request a meeting. 
So these are the first steps of trying to put your complaint forward. But if the complainant, like any one of you, did not receive any response from the organization, she, you or her, or she or him actually have the right to write officially an official complaint to the government department against the organization. All this without using the media. I'll tell you why. If you don't, nobody respond to you from the organization, go and write an official complaint detailed and documented because they're going to try to government officers complain to the relevant government department dealing with this issue. Okay, this is number four. Number five is still unnecessary. If you still are not satisfied, I advise you not to give them any donation. This is number five. Number six, if someone else ask you ask you about them don't recommend them without making these scandalous things about them recommend other organizations because in your country could be a thousand or two thousand or five thousand or ten thousand organization said so, okay i have a better organization to this one which i trusted more you know why because by by cursing or scandalously cursing such an organization this will make the sick individual who anti charitable activity to destroy or to start throw rumors to علي دكتور نعتذر للمشاهدين بس كان في عندنا بعض الهجمات على الزوم فالعالم كله كله ان شاء الله سايلنت ايفري بودي يس دكتور ثانك يو ثانك يو ايفري وان وي نو ذات ات ذا مومنت ذير از ا لوت اوف ثينجز جوينج اون ذا فيسبوك Actually, we don't know who is actually coming to our Facebook pages or to our Twitter pages. As you can see, I've seen or listened to those people making noises. Coming back, number five or number six is uh, uh, don't recommend them to any donors. This is number one in the, in the first part of the first uh, problem or the first issue. As for the second part of the question, which is, Some donors are very sentimental. They want to deal directly with the recipient, with the orphans and the widows, especially the children and the women. Okay, and they're insisting to do that. For me, it is a it's an issue of a great and a grave concern, a great or a grave concern. Okay. Why? Number one, because this will create discriminative atmosphere between certain groups of orphans sponsored by certain donors and widows and other groups which are sponsored by other donors which they cannot reach them. You'll find maybe in the same street, in the same street, a family receiving extra uh, gifts from a donor and another family receiving none. Or in the same camp, One family receiving some toys for the children, and the other family does not receive toys from the children because of the donor. This is number one, discriminative atmosphere. Uh, number two is some of the donors might abuse or exploit the relationship between him, especially I'm talking about male, and the female widow and the children. Vice versa could be the, the, the needy family who is in a dire need To be helped can actually ex, I mean, uh, abuse or exploit the relationship with the donor to get more money from him. This number two. Number three, this communication will give two signals. One issue or one report will be given to the donor from the children and their mothers because they need more fund, more help. The other is the reports coming from the organization. So these conflicting reports coming from the individuals and coming 
from uh, from the orphans and widows and coming from the organization and the report comprehensive report actually will create reputation reputation hazard to the organization number three uh, such behavior if we let this go to the donors to direct to directly uh, uh, contact them uh, ultimately will lead to because this will create what this will create a status of disgust and grumbling and restiveness uh, feeling among the rest why should this group of women and uh, children receive something when my family and my other my, my sister's family are not receiving and this kind of conflicting and the and and bad atmosphere inside the organization will delay the progressive uh, program of training, capacity building, and empowerment of the widows and uh, the orphans. Why? Because we'll be dealing with actually firefighting, trying to uh, uh, deal with this problem of miscommunication happening between women, between widows, uh, orphans, and uh, uh, the donors. Number five, uh, five, which is last but not least, some community such a communication will lead to what you know because to be very honest to be very honest to be very honest listen to me i if i am in charge now of the orphan department i will only employ women to deal with widows and children and, and orphans not men that's actually from me because of my experience so this kind of continuous communication is number five might lead to have this kind of rumor of relationship happening between some widows and donors, especially if a, a visit happened from a donor to the family. And this is the number five in my list, on my list. So please, everyone, I beg you to raise the level of awareness among the different donors and let them to realize the grave impact of such communication on the widows orphan organization and charitable sector as a whole. Please don't do it. If donors insist, tell them go and sponsor orphan somewhere else. Uh, problem number two, the exacerbation of administrative cost expenses. And why should we take it from the donor's money? Donor does not want any administration to be taken from his or her uh, donation. They don't, they don't, they don't. And this actually issue is going on and on and on for decades. And let us to discuss it from different angles. Firstly, let us look at the opinion of donors from, look at from the angles of, of opinion of donors who are living in a comfortable countries, affluent countries, middle-class countries, like the Gulf countries, like Europe, like Canada, like uh, America, people are comfortable in their life. And people, because they have a stable income, can be able to do some voluntary, extra voluntary activity for free. So they have no problem with this. From this background, they might tell you what, I want my 100 pound to go exactly, but don't give you any money for administration. Okay, to be very honest, I have a financial stability in my country. I have my income, so I can give my evening for free, my weekend for free, even my holidays for free. But those people in these areas need to be uh, financially stable. No social welfare, no income, no job, unfortunately. So we cannot be treating them like we treat ourselves. Like I know that in some Gulf countries, the government itself could be sponsoring the, 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 some of the employees by actually providing the organization with the salary or seconding some of her employees to work for some organization. This could be all right. Tell the organization, I don't want any money to be uh, spent on administration. But you have to realize that the scales measuring iron or cement or sands and flour it's not like the scale uh, uh, measuring uh, and weighing silver gold and platinum 
you need to have to use two different measures. I live in a very comfortable country, but the other people in Sudan or South Sudan or in Yemen, they need to feed their families. They might not only feed one family, they might be feeding five or six families. Like any employee now in a Syrian organization might be, might be feeding five or 10 families and relatives and in him, okay? So we cannot actually treat them the same with the same measurements. So my dear donors, you have to realize that your piety and feeling of God theory is legitimate or could be legitimate, but you have to build it on a solid and sound research-based facts and the finding not on emotional baseless grounds. And be sure that if we follow this tendency of yours, this could become a deadly, deadly, deadly for the charitable and humanitarian organization because they can't find money. They can't find money to spend on the organization itself. If you have a good vehicle, and you tell them, I'm not going to give you the money for the petrol, or for the diesel, or for the gas, what is this? Next, please. Next, please. And listen to me for this, not a single organization, whether local field community or international organization will be able to find administrative funds to spend on your projects. And if we discuss this issue from different angles, we will be doing the following to these organizations, particularly the field ones. What are we going to do to them if we insist of not paying any administration cost to them? Number one, they cannot find financial resources to measure what the positive impact of your projects on the local communities. That's number one. Number two, they cannot find financial resources to build their capacity and train their staff and to improve the quality of their staff. Number three, they cannot find financial resources to empower the local communities and discover future leadership from the local community. Number four, they cannot think forward progressively to create with other local organization, this kind of conducive, cohesive atmosphere, bonding and building the local social infrastructure of the local communities. They can't. You think that this 2% or 5% or 6% is a huge amount of money, but it is a life saving for the local organization and the local community workers. And unfortunately, you know what will happen now? The ultimate result of that will force the poor local organization to write factual, to write factual, to write factual reports, not proper reports, to make you happy. And you'll be very happy of saying something which is not true. Don't force them. If you, if, if, if the thousand pounds you are donating or the 10,000 riyals that you are donating, 7% of it is less than Actually, 700 real. I think if you take your family uh, to, to for a dinner, you pay more than 700 real for a meal, for a family, and wherever you are. So please, donors. Donors might not be aware. This this actually is another 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 advice for me to do. Not donors might not be aware of the requirements of the local communities, and the local community organization in these poorer countries. Needless to say, what? Those people live in displacement, like inside Syria or in South Sudan, one million inside South Sudan, uh, and maybe about seven million inside Syria, and about four million inside Yemen. Okay? Or the people living in refugee camps, like actually from Syria, they are living in Turkey, in Jordan, in Yemen, and others. So it's very difficult. Please, my dear donor, you have to realize this situation affecting the difficult life of the field workers and the field operation. So please, donor, dear donor, listen to my advice to you. 
first of all, be aware of the need of the local communities and the uh, local community organizations. They need a lot of support and hand-holding and training and capacity building and guiding. Number two, be asserted that the administration expenditure is a crucial part of the success of the story of your projects and the, and the continuing sustainable growth and presence of the local and the international organization on earth. Without administrative cost, they cannot sustain themselves on earth. I beg you again, and I beg you again and again and again to consider that administration expenditure is life-saving method for the charitable and social sectors. It's not a piece of piety or fear of God. No, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, al amin alayha, amongst the uh, uh, eight categories of uh, eight categories of uh, al-zakah, expenditure of zakah. Secondly, this is a responsibility, this is lying, lying what? Certain organization, to be very honest, I, said, I think you must be very sick of me, so keep, keep repeating it. Certain organization, even in the West, unfortunately, subhanAllah, even in the West, saying or claiming 100% donations and 100% I do not accept this whatsoever. Whatsoever. And I mentioned my statement years ago, saying that the only place who has a 0% administration expenditure is in heaven. Because everything is made for you to come to your mouth, to come to your bedroom, to come to your body to dress, is by Allah, by the Creator. So if you are sitting in your bedroom, or in the dining room, or with your wife, or with your children, or whatever, and you wish to eat fried chicken, the fried chicken will come to your room. No fatigue, no hardship in heaven. So this is the only place that you'll get 0%. I'm not joking. And the organization who are claiming that, I will accept their claim. They have to produce something, which listen to me now, they have to provide us with the source of who is covering the administration expenditure and in a very transparent way. I don't want to know his name or the name of his organization, but I want at least, we want at least to know how much money came to you as in kind financial donation to support the organization. There is rent, there is electricity, there is uh, water, there is taxation, there is salaries, there is transportation, there is a lot of things. How much, if you have a billionaire, individual who's a billionaire, saying, I'm going to give you five million pounds every year to cover all this expenditure, okay? You have to claim it. You know why? Because we have to measure this kind of, 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 of cash donation to support the individual workers against how much money you raise. You might be raising, getting 5 million donation for the expenses from a donor and only raising 5 million. So it comes to be 100% or 50% or 40% or 30% or 5%. We don't know, but you have to claim it, to, to declare it. You have to clear any in-kind donation saved by you. Lastly, but not least, I declare to all donors that the value of the administrative expenditure of any local organization working in Syria, Yemen, Palestine, South Africa, South Sudan, and so on and so on, is not going to be less than 7%. Not less than 7%, not less than 7%. And this should be divided equally between the headquarter of the organization of this organization in Ghazi Antab or in Damascus or in Sana'a or Ramallah or Juba and the local field offices in Ma'rib, Darfur, Idlib, Waw, or Hasaka. And 3.5% to this and 3.5% to this or 3 and 4%. And even this could go to 10% and more. 
I remember a fatwa in the mid 90s given to us by one of the great sheikhs of Lebanon at that time, was the second to the Mufti of Lebanon. His name was Al Maulawi, Faisal Maulawi, Rahmatullah Ali. And he said, if the circumstances force you to spend 50% of the donation to let the other 50% to go to an area where nobody can reach, spend the 50% to let the other 50% go there. So please, brothers, don't be more pious than Allah, who said, al alayh. Okay, it could go up to more 10% and more. So the, I know some of the international organization when they raise funds from different country, they said to the local uh, to organization, only 3%. 3% do what? To do what? In Syria, or in South Sudan, in Yemen, to do what? To do what? And you are sitting in your office in, uh, in, uh, in Paris or London, New York or Kuwait or Doha or Riyadh or Istanbul, very comfortable life. I said, no, 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 no. Look at your salary, where you are. And look at the salaries of those people working in these field offices. These local offices and local field workers are the real unsung heroes behind our success and the greater achievement. We talked about them. Oh, I see you've done it. Who's done it? Not you. Not the people staying in London or Paris or Rome or Kuwait or Doha or Qatar or Doha or, or Manama or, or, or Istanbul or Riyadh. No, no, not you. It's them. The people are in Idlib, they were in Hasaka, the people in Juba and Wawa and Malakal in South Sudan, the people in, in, uh, in Jamina. All those people are the unsung heroes. The people not only in Kabul, but actually in different places in Afghanistan, very remote areas. Those are the unsung heroes. And you tell me, they make the success story and the great achievement for you, and you don't base their salaries? Why? Why? This is the second question. Third question, actually, the rise of the newly created superstars phenomena in the charitable field. Who might not know that neither the humanitarian principles nor the moral values? Okay? Which could sometimes give negative impact on the sector. And let me divide them into two groups. Group number one would be made out of three kind of new players, businessmen who have uh, this philanthropic desire, we bless the, them, heads of big families, influential families, clans and tribes. Number three, some superstars from among the drama, the actors, the actresses, the cinema industry, sports figures, media, government offices, uh, government offices, uh, uh, government employers, and, and, and many people like this, okay? Those actually, the first group. Those are the first group, okay? What we are going to talk about. Ali? Non the tubes to any. Okay. I first group. Group two will be a different bad apple. This was a good apple, this is the bad apple. Those businessmen dealing with shady, obscure businesses and having suspicious activities such as dealing in arms, pornography, prostitution, producing pornos films, pornos films, illegal drugs, narcotics, expired selling expired food materials, 
and medicine and others. This is group number four. I mean, category number four. Category number five, those were actually lunatics, opportunistics, actually swindlers, political swindlers are profiting, profiteering from this kind of activities. Let us see how can we deal with, with these two groups. We know how to deal with the people in the group one, but we need to work with them on what? On the following. Number one, to introduce to them the humanitarian and moral principles. Okay, so you have to understand it. Number two, to encourage them to do more work while keeping them, keeping in, 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 in mind their specificity, because those superstars would like to be seen as superstars in the field. And the specificities of the charitable work. Okay. Their specificity and specificity of the charitable work. Number three, inviting them to our meetings, to our conferences, actually, to our workshops, and even sometimes giving them the platform to speak about their experience. Number four, building partnership between us and them and building bridges with us and them. You are taking them by the hand because they don't have a, a bad history or bad intention, but we have to guide them. This is the first group. The second group, group number two, which is we have to follow these guidelines. First of all, with them, keep raising public awareness of how to deal with these organizations which are headed by those people. Because they use it as a camouflage. Those drug dealers or whatever it is, they make a lot of money. And each one of them has its own organization. That's number one. Raising awareness about those corrupt people. Number two, we have to create alternative funding for the organization benefiting from them. You cannot just tell the small organization don't take money from them without finding alternative source of funding for them. Number three, we have to be building more social and charitable coalition to stop the poisonous atmosphere created by such organizations and such individuals. Coalition, forums, platform to protect the sector. I will be discuss the second group when I discuss the, the, my message to the young people at the end, inshallah. So bear with me. Question number four is, call it the founder or the chairman syndrome, which is there as a part of our nature, which wrongly make the founders or the chairman's post is lifelong and forever which is wrong. Such founders or chairman, what will they do to keep themselves in office? Will hire people who are loyal to them or will hire the relatives. But remember me, remember that this organization is not a foundation, it's not a family foundation. If it is a family foundation, you should use your family fund and you can employ anybody from your own family. But if it is public organization, if it's civil society organization, you have no right to bypass the community and get members of your family, actually, or people who are closer to you. This will lead to the creation of the most corrupt atmosphere inside the organization. And this deadly atmosphere or deadly disease will be killing what? Once we go there, and follow the founder syndrome or the chairman syndrome and the employees or he or she employs whatever they want, it will be killing the innovation of employees or even of uh, people who are benefiting from the organization, the pioneering individuals. It will stop empowerment and social cohesion of the community because you are not empowering anybody, you are empowering your own family members. But it will not lead to building young future leadership who are having the ability to formulate different standards for future cultures that will build the future civilization of the country. This is this is what will lead to. The ultimate result of that, of the spread of this deadly malignant 
social diseases is killing of the charitable work and shrinking it is social space and this will only happen for what for my personal gain my personal interest not community interest not poor people interest how can we treat that with this actually group with second group following the humanitarian and moral principles such as transparency and good governance this is number one following for this is actually oh this is with this group lower the founder syndrome with the founder syndrome following uh, following that the humanitarian principles and moral principles, which some of which are uh, transparency and good governance. Number B, following the succession planning policies. Nobody should be staying in his post or her post forever, especially change leadership post. Number C, building the voluntary sector or system that enabled this organization to create future leadership from amongst the young people and train them. Number D, reviewing with relevant government departments, the government law govern, governing the activities of the social and charitable organization it has to be reviewed. Government law is not a Quran or Bible or whatever it is. It is ishtihad of the people who are actually civil servants in the government. Number E, adopting the principles of women and young people participation. We find that most of this organization of the founder syndrome do not involve women and do not have young people, young leadership amongst them. Adopting the principle of women and young people participation inside the higher executive at one level, the management level, the directorship level, and making it a part of the government regulation of governing the social and charitable organization. And the government regulation has to ask you to involve uh, women and young people in the executive role, in the management role, in the directorship role of the organization. <coughs> A, B, C, D. Number six, which is F, following the transparency principles, when we have a vacancy, whether it's a job vacancy or it is a vacancy in one of the directorship or the trustees we have to advertise it to the public and we have to accept the public and see the best from amongst them this was number question number four question number five which is organizational dependency on donation this is the this is another disease because sometimes the donation will stop like i tell you some examples in the good old days, everybody was donating to Chechnya between 1995 and 1997. Nobody donated to Chechnya anymore now. And then from 1998, 1999 to, 19, to 2001, or whatever it is, nobody gave to Chechnya anymore. That's another one. In Afghanistan, during the conflict between the Afghan and the Soviet, uh, soldiers, uh, army, when they went there, people for six or seven years putting Afghanistan on the top. Now nobody gives to Afghanistan. Even for Bosnia, between 1992 and 1995, it was top. Now nobody gave money to Bosnia anymore. To Darfur and other issues, nobody gave anymore. So don't depend on just donation. And build what we call it waqf or endowment scheme waqf for me is the nerve system of the survival permanence is the nerve system you know in our body there's a nervous system from the brain going to all the limbs and all the organs and all the everything in the body inside us if our nervous system is collapsing or be paralyzed, waqf is the nerve system 
of the survival permanence of sustainable charitable work. I say it again, Waqf is the nerve system or the nerve center of the survival permanence of the sustainable charitable work. This was a system created by whom? By societies and being approved by different religions thousands of years ago. It's nothing we invent. It's nothing we invent. It's nothing we invent. Nowadays, we have to make the waqf system is the fulcrum of the sustainable permanence of this divine social movement, which is social and humanitarian. Without building the waqf, cultural philosophy of thinking, the charitable organization will never, will never, will never be able to have a sustainable presence supporting their operations. Unfortunately. Now, my message to young people, I talked about these five questions or five issues before, finish them. I have spoken to you young people about five challenges facing the charitable work. And divide them into two groups. First group, where you find individuals and personal problems created by executives, board members, and even the chairmen themselves in the first group. In the second group, we talked about challenging facing organizations and subsidiary organizations in the second group. Let us start with the second group. The second group, we realized that awareness is extremely crucial, is its centerpiece. Raising awareness is centerpiece. Because charitable and social work is not a monopoly, is not a monopoly controlled by some people and is not for the others. Some political parties are not for the others. Some races are not for the others. Some culture are not for the others. Some religion are not for the others, but it's for everybody. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. The charitable and social work is loose work. And it's open for everyone of us. And every one of us has the right to respond to it, to respect it, and to be a part of it. The charitable work, charitable social work is loose work. And every one of us have the right to respond, respect, and be a part of it. Even you and me could play a part in framing it is policies, parameters, cultures, values, messages, morality, and visions. And if you want this to happen, young people, effectively, we have to raise the sound culture of the public awareness through building the institution of waqf. Come back to waqf, which actually was a part of our religion and still a part of our religion and the endowment. And such institutions will be the guarantor of the sustainable existence to all of our social and charitable work. We cannot have this kind of sustainable awareness raising without having stable waqf institution to support this process. Young people, you have to build the institution of waqf side by side next to your organization. And this is to be from the inception phase, from the very beginning. Why? To make it as inseparable part of the cultural behavior of societies and communities that we want to build their social infrastructure, protect their rights to exist and their natural resources as well. Why I'm creating this work and make it to make it inseparable part of the cultural behavior of societies and communities that we want to build 
their social infrastructure, protect their rights to exist, and their natural resources as well. This is the value of work. Afterwards, we have through work to build the capacity of the local organizations. That's number one, community workers, and empower them to build their local community organizations. They should be guided by the philosophy of the raised cultural public awareness gained by the sustainable existence of the social movement that can regulate the citizen's life and building the communities that they will live within their boundaries and develop them. So all this going together, going together, hand in hand together. Then we move with you, young people, inside the depths of the human souls, brains, hearts, mind, to treat it as hidden and malignant diseases, and treat the souls of the corrupt ones, and to reform the leadership of those who are leading these communities and their organizations. Your problem, young people, will be in how to deal with these two personalities with equal measures. Coming back to the corrupt individuals, which I mentioned that to you earlier on, that I'm going to discuss it later. Regarding the honest reformers group, people who are the founder syndrome, who are very keen to stay in the leadership position, Believing that they are the founders, the chairmen who spent most of their lives building such organization, they can become a real threat to the existence of these communities and their organizations. We deal with this group, with the friendly group, accordingly. We have to follow the process of succession planning and treat them kindly and with respect, because they have done a lot to the organization. You young people have to create for them another alternative, respectable, and suitable roles to suit their experiences and their community values. And that will be complementing your new leadership role. This is what you need to do for them. Don't just keep throwing them out of the organization without giving them a role to play. But regarding the second group, which is a bad apple, the corrupt and corrupting individuals, we also have to follow the same policy of succession planning with them on two levels. A, the peaceful succession planning by mutually talking to them to avoid confrontation with them. This will happen after raising the public awareness of the community members about the issue of corruption, but with one condition. And with one hand, we raise, we raise the issue, the public awareness about the issue of the corruption they are making for the, for, for the community, and with the other hand, trying to introduce the kind of peaceful, successful uh, uh, people, peaceful succession planning. With one condition, which is, that such individual not to be used by the organization or any organization again. Okay, but this does not prevent the individual, like you and myself and others, the individual community members or organization from taking legal action against them if they were badly affected by their bad behaviors. Yani, internally, we deal with it peacefully, the confrontation, after raising the awareness of the public, and with a guarantee that actually we're going to remove them without any quarrel or fight, actually. But we tell them that we're not going to use you and no other organization will be using you. Okay? But this does not stop anyone else in the, in, in the country or in the city or in the town or the community from taking them to court if they have done something to, wrong to him or to his family or to his community. 
The second method is revolutionary confrontational succession. They refused to go peacefully. So we have to remove them, either through election or through voting process. Also, after raising the awareness of the public about those people who are corrupt with facts and, and, and for Because such corrupting groups will become the stubborn obstacle and stumbling blocks for creating the awaited social reform. With them, there's no social reform. And this, as we mentioned before, should not let them to be escaped from public persecution and ramification up to the public. For me, as a new chair or as somebody in the organization, we will remove those people after putting the facts and figures and what they have done wrong. Okay? But the public have the right to take legal action against them if they have been badly affected by them. Also, we need not to forget the issue of the psychological and psychosocial reform for the leadership themselves of the organization and making it a solid ground for building the young future leadership. We keep helping the leadership of the organization because this could suffer from trauma, psychological trauma or physical trauma as well. New young leadership is able to build a social, means, a social movement based on moral values, humanitarian principles and parameters and conducive community cultures. I believe in you. So I'm talking about the new young leadership. Actually, these two paragraphs are together. We need not to forget the issue of psychological and uh, psychosocial reform for the leadership of the organization and making it a solid ground for building the young future leadership. Such young leadership will be able to build a social movement based on moral values, humanitarian principles, and parameters, and conducive community culture. I believe that you young people, in you and your capability to lead this difficult process, and you are the best for it. Dear young people, I have a full trust in you and listen to me. The Million Miles Social Reform March or movement started by our ancestors hundreds of years ago. And you with us or we with you will be able to complete it even if it takes us tens of years to come. Life did not stop because of someone's death and will not stop after someone else died. The pillars of life will move us forward from the life we live on earth to the life that we will live under earth before it was shown publicly on the day of the show, the day of the judgment before everyone else. The day we're on, neither wealth nor sons will avail except him who comes before God, Allah, with a pure heart. Make the safety of your heart the way forward for the safety of your doings. May Allah bless you all. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, thank you very much for listening to me. And if there's no questions, Brother uh, Ali, we can move on. No, there is no question, Doctor. Okay, thank you.